Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? To Japan, to back in that top of something else today. By something else, I'm going to be showing you all how to use XS Overlay. So, a few of my friends aren't as technically experienced or have any know-how about how to use anything in VR. Can you show me how to use the internet? Really hard. I might have a virus. <laughs> Could you run that McAfee shit the, again? The computer said I had malware. The only mal I know didn't save me in the fucking war. Yeah. Her name was Mallory, and she wasn't allowed to fight because she was a woman! Oh, man. Yeah. That's fucking hard. Yeah. And there's, very, there's like a variety of programs that will assist you in sort of solving various problems that you might run into. But for today, we're just going to go over like excess overlay and the reason that I use it. It's basically a convenient means by which you can project various screens, um, you know, from your desktop into a virtualized space. And if you don't know what I'm referring to yet, I will show you in just a few minutes here. But it's used for a variety of different applications. For my purposes, I usually use it as like a visual reference or like like as a means by which I can cycle through music. It's got a like a bunch of different uh, applications, but let's go ahead and open her up, see what we can do with it. All right, back in a sec. So first things first, we need to find excess overlay. And you can simply do that by going to the store on Steam and going into search bar and saying excess overlay. Now, you'll notice that it costs about 10 bucks. And I know that a lot of people balk whenever they see like, Something that they feel should be free, but costs like 10 bucks or something. It's a nominal fee. Um, honestly, I would say this is definitely worthwhile for all the capabilities I can showcase. I mean, like, just look at that. You can bring up a virtual desktop inside of a virtual space and have access to it when you're in something like, I don't know, uh, any VR game, honestly, VR chat but it will be fairly useful to you. So I would say just go ahead and buy that for about 10 bucks, install it, and make sure that it's in your library. So obviously you go to your VR and it should appear right down here, you know, X, alphabetical order, it's gonna be at the very bottom. And you just go ahead and click on that and launch it. All right, so we just launched Excess Overlay, and obviously launching Excess Overlay or any other programs associated with SteamVR is going to result in SteamVR launching, but we're not too focused on that right now. We're focusing exclusively on Excess Overlay. So the easiest way to tell if Excess Overlay is actually functioning properly or not is by lifting your hands. If you're right-handed, a screen should appear on your left wrist. So obviously here, it looks like something out of Pip-Boy 3000. Um, the top portion is going to display any devices that are currently connected and are currently active with SteamVR. For instance, you got your controllers on the left-hand side. Uh, obviously, I have full command of my fingers and hands, so that checks out. And three vibe trackers. I have full body. I can move around, you know, be dynamic. But um, yeah, obviously, you got the time, you got the date. And on the far right-hand side, you got layout mode, you got media controls, and you got system performance. So layout mode is going to basically dictate what you can actually bring up, like a disembodied screen in a VR space. But media controls will allow you to cycle through music based on the current player that you happen to be using. Uh, I typically use YouTube, and it will enable you to sort of cycle through music if you have a playlist open. Uh, system performance, obviously pretty self-explanatory. You click on that, it shows you your system's performance at the time of clicking. But we're not too interested in all that right now. We're going to click layout mode. Layout mode brings a variety of options up top here. Um, you got new window, you got recenter windows, you got keyboard, you got grid view, you got layouts, and you got settings. Now, settings will enable you to basically customize the presentation of this little screen here based on personal preferences. Um, obviously, if you're left-handed, you're going to tell the program, hey, I'm actually left-handed. If you click on that, it's going to make the screen appear on your right wrist as opposed to your left. But I'm not left-handed, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to click that back over here so it appears on my left. Um, and you can click, like, change the placement of this. It doesn't have to be your wrist. It's just the most convenient. Um, there's a variety of different options to like further customize this any way you want it, but... You know, presently, like, I like the way it looks, so I'm not going to play with that too much. I'm going to go ahead and click the settings to get out of that. Uh, keyboard is actually fairly useful. And if you wonder how to, like, manipulate this, um, you're going to have to squeeze your controller. So if you're using a valve index, you're going to have to squeeze around the handle of the controller. And as long as you see that little turquoise dot, you're going to be able to manipulate it any way you want. Now, if you move around in a world, it's going to follow you. It's just going to be right where you left it. Uh, one thing that you can do 
hey, this is too big for you, you can hold it as long as you're squeezing on that button, either right hand or left hand. Like, it really doesn't matter, depending on, like, what you need to do with it. Um, as long as you're holding onto it like this and you can manipulate it, all you have to do is hold and click the right trigger button and it's going to enable you to make it smaller or bigger. This is going to be useful in a few moments and I'll show you why, but this is pretty handy to have when SteamVR's like inherent keyboard is no longer functioning for whatever reason. Um, we're most interested in new window, so you're going to click the plus sign, it's going to bring up a new window. Boom! A new window in a VR space. And this is obviously reflective of either a program if you like based on these options down here there's obviously the settings there's the windows there's monitors and there's the delete all so you can just delete that if you don't want that there and you're not confined to just one screen by the, by the way like you can bring up as many as you need so obviously it's relaying my steam vr view because that's what i'm currently recording through that enables you to see like what i'm looking at um, but yeah, monitors will really depend on how many monitors you have connected to your PC and what's currently active. Um, we're going to go over here and, you know, for instance, what I like to do with this is I like to cycle through music based on what I happen to be wanting to listen to at the time. Um, but like another alternative use for this is I'm just going to go ahead and go to Twitch real quick. So I don't have a dedicated program that enables me to view the chat room whenever I'm live streaming. So if I'm live streaming through, um, you know, Steam VR or like any other virtual reality based game, uh, I'm basically what I do. I go to the options here, I click left. Remember what I said before, same principles apply to the keyboard to the uh, VR screen. You just manipulate it by like grabbing it with your controller squeezing down on that handle and if it's too big for you you can pull it away from well pull it towards you if you pull the controller towards your body while you're holding that right trigger button it'll make it shrink and if you push away from the body it's going to make it grow so it depends on what you want like your personal preferences um, I think that's a decent screen size because I don't really like the idea of carrying an HD TV on my left wrist. Um, but yeah, looking at that, um, you can go ahead and lock that into place. Locking it into a place will enable you to keep it there. It is going to remain on your left wrist. So you've accidentally squeezed your controller while that little turquoise dot is pointing in the vague direction of the screen. It's not going to go all over the place. You know, it's locked in place. Now, I will warn you, if you click on stuff, you know, while you're, uh, while like, you know, this is up and you're like pointing in its direction, that little turquoise dot happens to be inside of that screen, it is going to start to affect, like, you might accidentally click on something, it might actually open up a link or something like that, if you're looking at a document or something like that. I'm just like giving you the heads up because you can still like technically click on things while you're here. Now, if you click on settings, you can change the opacity of this. You can turn it down or you can turn it up really depends on your personal preference. If the brightness is too high, you can turn that down and, or turn it back up. Uh, me personally, I would recommend an opacity of about 25%. Um, some people might say that that's too dim or like too transparent. It really comes down to personal preference. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the opacity back up because we're not too focused on that. Um, what if I don't want it on my left hand? What if I'm on my right? Well, you click on the right, it's gonna appear on the right hand side. You go through the same process you did before. It's still locked in place. We're going to unlock that. And you're going to be able to manipulate it to be clipped to your left-hand side or right-hand side now. So, you know, pretty handy. Just something to, like, keep in mind. Um, new window popped up. So here's what we're going to do. Um, one purpose, like, that I think, like, this would be pretty useful for is I like to do a lot of acting in VR. So what you can do... Um, this is really comes down to like the size of the script because you can only make this so big and be useful to you. All right. So what we're going to do now, instead of clipping it to our left hand wrist or right hand wrist, we're going to clip it to our head. All right. So now it's clipped to my head and obviously the text is pretty fucking small. You're going to want to pull that closer to you and want to make it bigger so you can actually read what's on the script. 
and you're gonna wanna lock it in place. Now you might be wondering, why would you lock that to your head? Well, think about it this way. You need to be able to look around and be like aware of things going on around you. You might have to respond to somebody that approaches you or you might have to like dodge somebody trying to punch you or something like that in a hypothetical acting like, you know, scenario. Obviously, you're not going to look past this particular script right here. It's way too bright, it is way too solid. So you're going to turn the opacity down. Um, what I would also do is you can manipulate like, you know, the actual text on the screen to sort of reflect your personal preferences and make it a little bit easier to read. But I'll just go ahead and read a little bit um, while it's like clipped. I'll look around a little bit, not too much. Obviously, this is just a test run a little bit of a tutorial so and that's why i'm sad all the time because i can't be who i want to be i've just been so worried about what others are going to say or think about me at the end of the day it's not enough to go around pretending because i just want to be myself furry gay become my persona free from people judging me or talking shit about me but i'm also kind of worried about what other people are going to react especially my parents um, so obviously that's going to be a lot of mental focus to be able to read this and be able to move around because as you can see, this is already like kind of getting blurry the more you move your head. But if it's like a subtle motion and there's like a brief pause in between whatever action you're going to perform versus what you're going to say, it could be fairly useful. But most people don't rely on that. They do not clip it to your left hand or right wrist. They actually just leave it in the world. So if you click world, it's just going to remain there. The problem with this, it's going to remain roughly where you put it. And if you move around a little bit, it's going to follow you. All right. There are ways around that. For instance, I have experimented with the pin button, but pin like also just seems to keep it like, you know, right there. All right. The difference is, and we're going to unlock that, unpin it. Yep. No major difference. I've been experimenting with this. Um, I'm just telling you how I use it. But yeah, this should be a quick primer on how to do all this. Obviously, like you might be confined to just one monitor if you're not having multiple monitors. So if you click Windows, Windows will actually bring up something fairly specific, like a program or maybe like Windows Explorer. Um, it's going to bring up something a lot more specific and you're going to be able to cycle through it by going up and down on your controller here. For instance, there's Chrome. If I don't want to be in Windows Explorer, I want to go to Chrome. I can go to Chrome. We're right back where we started. Um, if we want to go to Steam for whatever reason, we can go there. So you can see like the versatility of this program, right? Like it's not just me. But anyway, that's just a quick primer. Um, I hope you find this program to be fairly useful. And you can utilize this if you don't want this screen anymore. You can just click delete. And obviously, if you go to the far right hand side while this is still open, you can click delete all. Um, but it really comes down to what purpose this can serve for you. Usually as a frame of reference, if you're referring to the virtual screen and virtual space while you're playing a VR game or allowing you to monitor like a Discord chat room or something like that. But I'm sure you can find, you know, a variety of different uses for this particular program. Anyway, so a bit of a bare bones basic tutorial on how to use XS Overlay, but I thought it was kind of helpful, if for nothing else, to demo the capabilities of XS Overlay and what its potential uses might be for any prospective buyer out there willing to drop 10 bucks for it. Uh, big shout out to Cyberpimp. He's the one that inspired me to make this video because he wanted one, like, you know, through my eyes, how to utilize the program to its fullest, as well as to demo the capabilities and how it'd be useful to him, because he was having some serious doubts about the efficacy and ability for him to use this for any practical purpose or function. And I figure I would actually like show through my eyes and the form and function of the program in its entirety, how to sort of utilize it to its full effect. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Till next time guys, take care and peace. I hope you all have a better one.
Hey fellas, thanks for watching the video today. I really appreciate it. Would you care to hit the like button and subscribe for more? You know I really appreciate that, right? And hey, if you're in the mood for gaming, how about you check me out on Twitch sometime? Link in the description below. Anyway, till next time guys, take care and peace. I hope you all have a better one.